Delfield Quilt Company. If you haven't been here before, I like to quilt and I share the projects I'm working on and how I made them via this channel. For today's project, I've got another little Valentine's Day project for you. And for this one, we're going to do some crumb quilting. And basically, crumb quilting is taking your crumbs, your little fabric crumbs that are typically about one inch to two inch in size, or really whatever you consider a crumb. And then we're going to sew them together to make a bigger piece of fabric. And then we're going to turn that into this little heart pillow. All right, now I'm going to show you how I made it. All right, to make this little crumb quilt project, first you need your crumbs. So I've got a lot of different size scraps here. And I'm using a combination of pinks and reds. And I also need a template for a heart. You certainly could do this freehand. Not too challenging of a shape, but I do have a template available on our website in case you would like to use the same one that I'm going to use. And if you do go to our website to download that free heart template, don't forget to check out the free resources. There's lots of patterns there that we have that are available for free to download. And we have some more Valentine's Day themed projects as well. And I'm also turning this into a pillow, so I need some yardage for the binding. And I need some yardage for the backing of the pillow top. It's probably about two thirds yards for that. And then I'm going to use some fusible midweight from Pellon. This is just where it's fusible just on one side. You can feel those little bumps. I'm only going to use this just to put on the back of the heart once I have it all cut out so that I can applique it onto the pillow top. If you're not making a pillow or you're not going to applique, you wouldn't need this piece here. All right, the first thing I want to do is get my scraps out of my bag. I do like to sort my scraps by color. So I've got a variety here of all different sizes. So basically we're going to sew pieces together, probably cut them up again, sew them back together until we have a nice big fabric piece that's going to need to be probably around 12 inches by 12 inches uh, close to square. All right, to get started, I'm going to just iron my pieces. So I've seen a lot of different ways that people do crumb quilting. Um, I really like the one that people sew on different pieces of paper to do this. I am just going to actually not use any paper to sew these onto, and I'm just going to sew pieces together until I get basically the size that I need. I'm not even worrying about having straight edges because this is just a pretty random looking project. I'm not worried about the seam allowances, and I want it just to be really scrappy looking and quick. But I do want to press all of these pieces just to make sure they're not wrinkled. I'm not quite sure how many scraps I'm going to need in total. I'm just going to make sure I have a good stack to start with. If I need to iron some more, I will go ahead and do that. And I think as I'm ironing these, I'm just going to sort them a little bit by size. I'm going to have my longer pieces on one pile, and then my shorter ones on a different pile. Another fun thing I think about sewing with your scraps and making crumb quilts is you get a kind of like a little walk down memory lane so you can see all the scraps from projects that you've already made. I'm going to cut down some of my longer pieces because I really don't want them too big. I want this to look really like a lot of little crumbs went into this. Alright, so basically when I get to my sewing machine, how I'm going to sew these together is I'm just going to take one of the larger pieces and then just lay on it some of my smaller pieces and just do a quarter inch along here and then I'll come back and press it. Okay, I've got my first little section here sewn, and then I'm just going to iron it with the seam going to one side, and then I'm going to cut this apart so I have two pieces. And I'm not being too fancy on the cutting part, I'm just being real random here. Alright, I'm going to keep going by sewing a few more pieces together. I got quite a good section here sewn, so I'm going to start cutting some of these apart and then pressing the seams again to one side. And then we'll start sewing some of these sewn pieces together to make a bigger piece. 
All right, I'm just gonna cut these pieces apart. Again, I'm not being too precise on this. I do kind of want a straight edge at least, um, but I'm not measuring to make sure that it's perfectly square or any type of perfect size. If there is salvage though, I'm gonna cut that off. And again, I want to sort these kind of similar size because then it'll be a little easier when it comes to sewing them together. And you can even save the pieces that you're cutting off for another little crumb project down the road. I've got all these trimmed up so I'm ready to sew these together and I'm just picking ones that are similar in size. And then again, I'm just going to do a quarter inch along this. And I am trying to stagger the seams a little bit just so it's not too bulky. And then I'm just going to sew all these together until I have another set of a little bit bigger crumb blocks. Okay, so I've got my smaller pieces sewn and my bigger pieces. And some of these I did sew maybe on the short ends to create a nice long strip. And some of them I sewed maybe on the longer ends to create more of a block. I liked a little bit of a variety in here just to add a little more shape and randomness to this project. So I'm going to press these like I did before and then I'm going to start sewing some of these pieces together. So it's kind of a rinse and repeat project where you just sew a small piece to another small piece, make a bigger piece, and then keep adding pieces until you've got a square that's going to be about 12 inches. All right, now that I've got these all pressed, I am just going to clean up the edges just a little bit. All right, just lay these out just a little bit just to see how big my size is going to be. I'm definitely going to need more scraps, so I'm going to sew some more together, and then we'll start making this even bigger. All right, I'm getting close to having my 12-inch square, and I just wanted to point out that as I'm getting bigger and bigger pieces, I'm going to be a little more strategic in how I'm putting these together, because I don't want to sew them all in a big strip, and I can't cut a square out of it then. So I'm just kind of placing some of these and going to clump them together just to make sure that I have more of a square shape when I'm all done. All right, I think I've got my piece big enough to fit my heart. All right, looks like it's going to fit just fine. And I've got a little bit left over that I think I might make a small heart from and either put it on a greeting card or maybe make a little, little heart pillow out of it. All right, before I cut this out, I am going to just put a little more spray starch I've been using the Magic one lately, and I really like this one because it doesn't have a, a smell to it. I'm using spray starch because I just want to make sure this is nice and flat, or as flat as that can be, because there are so many seams in this little crumb quilt block. If you've ever crumb quilted before and you have some tips on how you crumb quilt, please leave them in the comments because I always love reading those. And I think others might too. Now I'm going to bring back the interfacing. I'm just going to roughly cut out the size that I need. And I am right away, I'm just going to clip a hole in the center of this because I'm going to use that to turn this inside out when I've got this done. And by using this interfacing to do this applique method, it's going to give me a nice clean edge. You could do this in a raw applique method as well. Actually, the last video I put out was on raw applique, so if you want to see how that is done, please check out that video. And I'm just going to trace around this. You do want to make sure that your interface has that, that little bubbly texture on there facing to the right side of your crumb quilt piece. Because when we turn this inside out, that's going to then have that fusible on the outside, so when I put it to the pillow cover, it should stay down for us. All right, I'm just going to pin this down in a few places and I'm going to cut all the way around. All right, I'm going to save these pieces for a little project later. All right, now that I have my piece cut out, I'm just going to sew a quarter inch along the perimeter of the heart. Okay, I've got it sewn all around the edges and I'm going to take the pins out. And it's helpful to have a tool to help poke the seams out. So I'm just going to go then where I made this cut before 
And I'm gonna turn this whole heart inside out, or right side out actually. And because this has that fusible interfacing on it, you don't wanna iron it until you're ready to stick it to your pillow top. I think I'm gonna clip a little bit of that seam at the heart center just to make sure that it can fold down nicely. I'm gonna go around it one more time, and then we'll get our backing fabric ready. And I plan on making about a 20 inch pillow with this. So I'm gonna start by cutting my background fabric 20, I'm gonna go about 21, 22 inches. And then after I sew the heart on, I'll trim it down to the size that I need. All right, I've got my piece of fabric cut and I just finger creased the center point just so I can make sure I get my heart in the right spot. You're gonna to wanna to follow whatever instructions your fusible webbing has for you. And I'm ironing it from the back so I think the front's just a little too thick. So I figure I'll start here first, flip it over, and then iron the front of this. Okay, oh, that looks so cute. So you could sew this by hand if you want to hide the stitches, or you can do a simple top stitch, which is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna just do a blanket stitch all the way around the edge. And there I got my heart sewn on. You can see I just did a blanket stitch all the way around. Now I'm going to probably quilt the top just a little bit and then turn this into a pillow. I'm not gonna show you how to do that today because I've got a couple videos there on how to construct the pillow using an envelope method. I'll link a few of those in the show notes in case you wanna see how the pillow can be made. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and visit our little quilt shop at delfieldquiltco.com. And I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Music